Hi everyone, my name is Giuliano. In today's video, I'm gonna show you Power Toys. No, don't worry, I will not talk about toys. Power Toys, it's a very great tool, totally free, that helps you to increase the productivity on your Windows machine. Okay, let's check it out together and I'll show you every feature. Okay, let's start. We are here in the GitHub page of this project, which is totally free. It's an open source project. You can even have a look to the structure of this solution and you can also contribute if you want. Scrolling a little bit down, we have in this readme file, we have a bunch of information. So we can directly open the downloads and release notes if you want to install this useful tool. Or we can read additional information, there is the roadmap. And then here we have a summary of the current utilities. We will go through every functionality and then I'll show you this last one, which is an experimental feature. If you want to have and test and play with this last feature, you have to install an experimental version of Power Toys, but I will show you in a bit. We are ready to install this tool. In order to do that, we have to click on this link, Downloads and Release Notes. Here there are all versions available of this tool. If you scroll down, you can find the experimental version of Power Toys. And here we go. In this experimental version is contained the last feature that I showed you before in the table, Video Conference Mute which is very useful if you deal and work with Teams, Zoom or WebEx. Okay, let's start now to install the latest version of Power Toys. Let's click on this one and here you are able to click on the .exe file in order to install this solution. I am on my desktop. Once you have installed this tool, you are able to run it. In order to do that, you can type on the Windows key and then Power Toys and the app will show up. You can even open the system try icons if you prefer open this tool following this other approach. And here there is the icon Power Toys. Let's click on it. Now the app is opened. We have this window with the settings of this application as a first menu item. And here you have the ability to run this app as administrator. You can change the appearance, dark light or Windows default. Finally, we have by default run at startup. And this is also my suggestion in this way, every time that you start to work with your PC, you will have always available this set of utilities. Then we have the updates section. And from here, you can automatically download new updates. You will get a task notification every time that will be available a new version of Power Toys. It's time now to go through every capability of this fantastic tool. Color Picker. This is a very useful feature. It allows you to get every color available on your screen and reuse it in every other software. Okay, from here we can see that you can use this feature by typing Ctrl Shift C. Then you can activate and decide which kind of behavior. You can have the color picker with editor integrated or only the editor and then or only the color picker. Then we have the color formats. You can enable other formats or you can use by default the hexadecimal value of the color. It's fine. So I have a PowerPoint presentation and I want to define the background color of the first slide. In order to do that, I will use the color picker of Power Toys. So if I type Ctrl Shift C, I will open this feature and near to my mouse pointer, I have now an hexadecimal value that follow me. Now I want to get the color of this ocean and then I will select this pixel. Then click with my mouse, I will open now this panel and from here I can see the hexadecimal value of this color. I can copy to my clipboard this value. If I want to change a little bit this color, I can select from here other colors or I can adjust this existing color by moving the sliders here. 
but I will click on cancel. I already copied, so let's close this panel and now let me jump on my PowerPoint presentation. I already opened here the format background panel and of this slide and from here I want to select now solid fill. I will add now this new color that I added and from here on more color I'm able to paste this hexadecimal value. Clicking on OK now I will confirm and now I have as a background color this color selected by using the color picker. Fancy zones. This helps you to make easy multitasking. Let's say that you need to read content from several windows. With Windows, you can use this out-of-the-box feature that allows you to drag and drop this window and next to this window, side by side, you can select another one. Now with fancy zones you can extend this functionality. In fact, from here there is this button that allows you to run and open this utility. Now from here you have to select which monitor you want to use. In my case I have two monitors and I will use the second one. From here you have a bunch of templates that you can use. You have focus, columns, rows, grid and priority grid. Now I want to create my own template. In order to do that, I will click on Custom. This will allow me to create my layout. Now I will click on Create New Custom, then Edit Selected Layout. From here I can decide the name and I will type two columns, two rows. And then I will click on Add New Zone. From here I can position this new zone that I just created. Now I'll do all my best to have the structure that I want to have. Then I will click again on plus on the plus button because I will add this other one and again a new one. So I'll try to cover all screen that I have. I will reduce now this window and OK. I can move a little bit down this other window. And finally, this last one, I will have this last window on the right. Here we go. I have my layout now. I want to save and apply this new layout. And this will be now my default layout that I can use. I will click again on apply and I can close now. This means that I can use this new layout just created. How I can do that? You have just to keep pressing the key, shift, and then you can drag and drop your window in the zone that you created. Then again, keep pressing shift and I will drop this second one here. Let's do the same with other window that I already have. And finally, with this last one on the right. Here we go, now I'm using that template that I just created with Power Toys Fancy Zones. Here you have additional functionality, this is all by default, you have Alt Shift key to activate zones while dragging. Then you can change a little bit the behavior of this capability if you want. File Explorer. In Windows there's no way to have a preview of an SVG file or a markdown file. Now, when this capability is turned on, if you open the Windows File Explorer, you are now able to see a preview of an SVG file or a Markdown file. All you need to do is click on the tab View and then enable the preview pane. Then, if I click now on this SVG file, I can see the preview of this image. The same thing with the Markdown file. I have one this and I can see now the content of this file. I can even select a text, copy this text easily and reuse it in another file. Image Resizer. This allows you to resize easily an image or multiple image just with few clicks. Now here you have a bunch of image sizes. You have small, medium, large and phone. And then you have here the pixel. You can add your own image size. For example, I can just type here square. And from here I can type 300 for 300. And now I added also my image size. 
will delete this one. And down below here we have encoding. You can decide which kind of encoder you want to use. There are PNG, BMP, JPEG, TIFF, and so on. Quality, level, PNG interlacing, TIFF compression, and file name format. Okay, let's see in action this feature. I have here Windows Explorer already opened and I want to resize this image, this single image. I will click with the right button of my mouse and then I have here this new option available, resize pictures. From here now I can decide which size I want to use, small, medium, large, and I will use this one that I just created, resize. So the good thing that you will keep always the original of this image and you will have a new one with this parenthesis square. You can also resize multiple images. For example, I will select this tree, then right click with my mouse and then you will have resize pictures option. I will use this one square and then click on resize. And now these three images are resized with the name square. Keyboard Manager. This feature will allow you to remap keys and remap shortcuts. For example, if I click on a remap a key, I am now able to define that when I press the key A, I will get Ctrl C. And you can click on the plus button here and then you can add your key, for example, I will add D and then you can decide to have C. Here we go. So every time that I will type on D, I will have Ctrl C. Regarding the remap shortcuts, opening this new panel, you can define a shortcut for specific application. From this example, you can read here that if you press Ctrl C, you can get Alt only on Microsoft Edge. You can have the shortcut here, then map it to, and then the target app. Power Rename, it helps you to rename multiple files with one single action. In this page, you can configure the shell integration if you want to show the icon on context menu or appear only in extended context menu. Enable autocomplete for the search and replace fields, the maximum number of items and show values from last use. In behavior, you can Turn on the regex syntax. Okay, let's let's go now on the Windows Explorer and I have here some images that I resized previously. As a side effect, I have now the text square in some images and I want to remove this text. Now I will use power rename to do that. So let me select every image with a text square in the file name. Then right click with my mouse and power rename. From here I will go and I will select square and I want to replace square with X. Below we have here the original file name and on the right we have the renamed file. This is the preview how it looks like the file name of my images. Let's click on rename. And now we have the text replace it. Power Toys Run, it's a quick launcher that you can invoke by pressing Alt Space. And here in the search, you can type PowerPoint, for example, and here you have the result. You have the ability to run as administrator, a software. Then you can open containing folder where is located the application and open path in console. Shortcut Guide, if you keep pressing the key Windows, will appear this overlay that remind you the common Windows shortcut and there are a lot so this is very helpful when you have to refresh your memory with some common shortcut. Video conference mute, the last of this list. This feature allows you quickly to mute camera and microphone using shortcuts. This is very useful when you work with Teams, Zoom or WebEx, for example. This is an experimental feature. We have here the three shortcuts available, then we have the microphone. In this drop-down you can select one microphone or all. Then the camera that you want to target. 
And finally, where do you want to place this panel in the top right corner and show toolbar on the main monitor? Okay, let's see this last feature. Here I am in a Microsoft Teams meeting now. I can turn off my camera by keep pressed Windows key Shift O and now I disabled the camera. Okay, that was a quick tutorial how you can use Power Toys on your Windows machine. If you enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned with my next videos. Put a comment down below if you want to see me cover any other topics in the future. This is exactly how I build my to-do list for my next videos. I hope to see you next time.